everybody it's sherry from alleged actually and i am back today to recap married to medicine now before i do that let me just say typically on mondays i recap real housewives of potomac and married to medicine but those of you that were on saturday while me and bria did our pop culture saturday i did mention that i was going to be dropping real housewives of potomac from my lineup now let me just get into why guys i did watch sunday and gave it a chance but it's just not giving what it's supposed to be giving initially i'd said that i had some concerns and that maybe i think it was a few weeks ago that i was probably not going to be recapping it i had a a listener reach out and ask that i keep going a little bit but then the more conversation we all agreed this season is just not it's not giving I did actually tune in last night, um, not to give a recap, but just to say that the girls are still in Austin. Nothing is moving. The storylines, what storylines? We've already talked about the fact that Robin and Juan are still having their marital woes. He doesn't seem to care. Nothing changed. NECA and Wendy are still not fans of each other. Nothing's changed. It just, guys, I can't. You know, I, I, I am. I do, I do watch my reality shows and I'm a fan of most shows reality, but a sister can't sit there and take up these good folks time talking about a show that I don't think most of us really care about this season. So moving right along to Married to Medicine, um, last night was also not one of our more exciting episodes. However, the ladies are still in Napa Valley. Um, they're coming to the end of their girl's trip. Um, basically, they are reflecting a little bit on the big episode where the friend group gets together and basically tells Miss Quad, bye-bye. Yeah. So, it opens up with Dr. Jackie and Dr. Heavenly having a little breakfast. Dr. Heavenly decides to share a little bit of her pancakes with Dr. Jackie, as if Dr. Jackie looks like she eats pancakes. Anywho, she ate a bite at least or nothing child anyway they talk about did they in fact feel like that um it was the right decision to make um dr jackie actually even says to dr heavenly it seems like that word use really did something to you and dr heavenly remarks you know i guess basically after she thought about it and thought about her interactions with quad and thought about dr jackie's um advice as to not to let quad use you or it appears that quad uses you when it's convenient for her like your friendship is only valuable to her when she needs you to bring her into the fold of the girls group when they're airing what have you anyway the two of them decide pretty much that kicking quad off the island was just the best thing for them to do whether it is or isn't i don't know um I've heard a lot of people say the show was a snooze fest last night because Quad wasn't on there that episode. I don't know if I agree or not because I don't know what Quad could actually bring that would be so much more exciting than what we're seeing. I mean, if her MO is she doesn't care about Sweet T and Dr. G's um, marriage or relationship other than her fighting with Toya, which we've all seen that. I'm not sure what, what everybody thinks they're missing, but we'll see. Truth be told, it's noted that she will be on the finale episode. She will make another appearance before the season ends. So we'll see how that goes. But alas, the ladies get together for their final day in Napa. Toya has some things planned because Toya is leading the trip. Um, some ladies will be going to the spa. And some ladies will be going on a tuck tuck tour, which is a cute like little car, I guess it's kind of like a carriage type thing um, where they go through the town of Napa. Cute. So the girls are divided. The spa girls are Phaedra, Toya, Dr. Simone, and Phaedra, Toya, Dr. Simone, and Dr. Alicia. The Tuck Tuck Tour is Dr. Heavenly, Dr. Jackie, and Sweet Tea. Now, Toya was strategic in doing that simply because Dr. Jackie and Dr. Heavenly 
aren't as um, accepting as Sweet Tea as the other ladies have become. And so it is her strategy, particularly Dr. Heavenly. Uh, I haven't really seen Dr. Jackie and her actually go at it or anything. You know, Dr. Jackie doesn't say too much anyway. Just kind of get those smug facial expressions. Anywho, it, it was a good gesture. I see where Toya was going with that. And so the ladies go off on their separate excursions. Um, the ladies that go to the spa, who knew? Mud baths. Apparently they smell horrible. I don't know. But ends up Toya and Dr. Alicia opt to do the, the mud bath. And Phaedra and Dr. Alicia do a mineral bath, which looked a lot more inviting. That mud child, according to the ladies, they say it smells like sulfur or whatever. I don't think I could have put my body in it. I'm with Phaedra, who was fiercely protesting, inserting her body in that stench. Don't think I could have done it either, ladies. Mm-mm. No. Nah. Anywho, they seem to have a good time. And then it, it goes over to the other three ladies, Dr. Jackie, Dr. Heavenly, and Sweet Tea. Um, their banter is cute while they're doing their little um, tour through Napa. Um, they do talk to her about, um, on their way to getting to the Tuck Tuck, they talked to her. Apparently, Sweet Tea's had some pain during the trip. Um, in the feminine way, she's experiencing a lot of issues with fibroids and, you know, heavy flow during menstrual cycles and just some issues that apparently has caused her a great deal of pain. You'll see a scene where she states that she's been on muscle relaxers the whole time just to give her relief, which is for all of us women that know that that level of pain is just not, not at least throughout the full time of, um, that time of the month being that excruciation is that excruciating is not normal. And so being that daughter Jackie, of course, is an OBGYN, um, does seem like they keep telling her to put her big girl panties on. That kind of leans into Dr. Jackie's little issue with not taking complaints seriously, but child asks for another day. I'm going to give Dr. Jackie some grace. She's done. Come on. Instagram and apologize, put out a statement. She done cried and said she was sorry. So I'm going to give it to her. Let it be. Sorry, child. It did come off a little bit dismissive, but maybe that's because she don't really know sweet tea and that child, I'm going to let it, let it go. Anywho, the ladies um, that are doing the Tuck Tuck tour, they end up in a nice vineyard where they have a nice little charcuterie board and some wine. And um, they get a chance to talk to her a little more. The pivotal thing that I'm going to talk about where the real drama resides, which is literally while we're all watching this show in real time, each week, Phaedra facilitates an Instagram live where she will have some of the other ladies join her and they watch the show with the fans at the same time. Michelle, that went left. Here's why. So while Dr. Jackie, Dr. Heavenly, and Sweet Tea were enjoying their nice little charcuterie board spread and wine, um, they go into the confessional with Sweet Tea, who pretty much says, though the ladies have been nice and all, and you know, her and Heavenly have kind of semi made up, or at least they had made up at the time, that she just doesn't find that she has a whole lot in common. I mean, she made a little, um, a little comment or joke about how she used to call charcuterie boards, coochie boards, which seemed to disgust Dr. Jackie, which I mean, y'all, it's her humor. She's, she's still finding her way in the group. Uh, she, she is very seemingly unrefined. She's no dummy. She, she, she's a veteran. She has a good job. Um, she's no dummy. Unpolished, maybe certainly not dumb. But when you're hanging around ladies that are doctors, dentists, married to medicine, perhaps they even do a flashback of Dr. Heavenly 10 years ago, who in all her great dentistry, she wasn't the most polished either child. So over time, as she gets used to, if she continues with the show, um, all that'll take care of itself. But alas, they have to have something to talk about. At any rate, Sweet Tea in her confessional states that she just doesn't seem to have much in common with these ladies. She refers to them as grannies or grandmas. 
But let's be real, guys. How many times has Dr. Heavenly little girl her? She has on multiple occasions referred to Sweet T, aka Letitia, as a little girl. So, which is more offensive, calling a 32-year-old a little girl or a 50-something-year-old grandma? I don't know. At any rate, they wrap it up and um, the ladies all come together and get together and talk. Um, this is the first time, well, I'd say the second time that you actually hear anything from Dr. Alicia. She opens up again about her husband, who is Nigerian, uh, very traditional Nigerian in, in the ways of um, he's really into old school gender roles. Though Dr. Alicia is a dentist as well, she now is currently staying home with her children. Her husband is a doctor, Dr. Kima. His name is Kima. And she basically is, again, um, I guess you could say complaining to the ladies, venting to the ladies about how her husband expects her to be the stay-at-home mom, the uh, one that takes care of the house, takes care of the kids, takes care of him. Nothing wrong with that. If that's what you you ascribe to be or what you choose to do it, within the confines of your marriage, there's not a thing in this world wrong with that. Guys, I, I'm certainly not judging, but if you're not happy with that, that's something you need to, to talk to your spouse about. Alas, she's talking to the ladies and opening up. I think a lot of Dr. Alicia's issues stem from the fact that she was raised by a single mom um, that raised her to be a strong woman that raised her with the thought process that you, you'd ever go through this life feeling like you need a man. You can want a man, but feeling like you need a man is not what her mother instilled in her. Toya chimes in and says, well, well, yeah, once you became grown though, you saw for yourself that you do in fact need a man. Well, you see Dr. Alicia kind of nod, but I think, they see it differently and we know we know Toya's MO. And again, no judgment over here, child. I like getting my own bag, securing my own bag. Me and my husband are partners, but everybody's different. What works in your home works in your home. So trust me, no judgment over here. It's whatever you and your spouse choose to do. A okay. So Toya brings that up. And um, she kind of nods her head or whatever. The ladies also go on to ask Phaedra some questions. So guys, this is the first time you see Phaedra open up really with any substance at all or to bring anything of herself to the show. She does talk about, they've asked her, does she consider ever getting married again? And Phaedra surprisingly says no. Um, as a sweet little Southern belle with her upbringing, I'm surprised at that. But she says, and, and you know, again, that's her experience. She said that though she was very much in love with, we all know Apollo from Real Housewives of Atlanta. We watched their love story unfold and then dissolve right before our eyes. Um, but she did say that she be, she, at that time, of course, she was very much in love with Apollo. They started a family. You know, she had aspired to have this dream life with her and Apollo. And she said that everything just kind of went very dark. She had a really rough divorce with him. We all know that he also had legal issues that sent him to prison for a period of time. And it just played out on TV, just kind of, I'm certain, as a nightmare. I cannot imagine, you know, her being an attorney and then the businesses and the things and, and her stake in the community to be humbled down to being commingled with that kind of um, salacious um, drama. And, you know, even sometimes people put her in the category with him, suggesting that she was very clear that he got his money um, illegal ways. Child, I digress. That's neither here nor there. Apollo has served his time, has now moved on, and is married to another young lady named Cherie, and um, seems to be doing great and is happy, so child. But I said all of that to say that this is the first time since this season that Phaedra has been on Married to Medicine that we hear anything of significance from her. 
She goes on to say that she also allows her boys, despite the things that she went through with Apollo, to have their own separate relationship with their father and to decide for themselves and that she did not insert to her boys her feelings on Apollo or what she's gone through with him. I don't know if I agree with that because word is while he was locked up, she did not allow the boys to go visit him and all that. But child, again, I digress. The man is free now, married on to the next, right? Meanwhile, back in Atlanta, we get a chance to see a couple of the guys get together. So um, Dr. Eugene stops by Cecil's for a drink and a cigar. Um, and I like, I always like when the husbands get together. I think that that's the wonderful thing about doc or married to medicine that on this show, you do see some actual real marriages, some marriages that have some mutual respect. I mean, these, of course, these couples aren't perfect. They've had their things, right? But I really see that on this show, marriage is certainly more, take it more serious, honored, um, and, and it's refreshing to see. So the guys were kind of going back to when they all got together and you saw Dr. Kima with the men basically talking about how this was the first time he had his children by himself, that he really felt like that was more of his wife still. Um, you see the guys kind of side-eyeing because basically with their women, that just wouldn't fly. And that's basically what the conversation pretty much consisted of for with Dr. Eugene and Cecil stating that Neither Toya, Toya does stay home with her children, but that's by choice. But some of the things that came out of his mouth regarding women, um, or even the way that he interacted with Dr. Alicia, they both agreed that they could never, they could never, nor could mine, <laughs> get away with such stuff. Anyway, it was cute. Nice exchange. Um, good to see the guys getting together. Meanwhile, back over in Napa Valley, the ladies get ready to return back to Atlanta um, before they do they have a beautiful dinner because every girl's trip closes with a big dinner. And the theme of the dinner was each woman was to wear the uh, type of wine, which is their favorite. So you had some ladies dressed in white, representing white wine, some ladies dressed in red, representing red wine. And then you had Miss Phaedra Parts all shimmered out. I guess that represented some sparkling wine. It was cute. I like the theme. They again revisited the fact of did they do the right thing with dismissing Quad? I think the consensus the consensus pretty much was that they did. Um, for the ladies, and we've talked about this already, their perspective is that Quad has not shown any accountability for her part in their friendships being broken, that she has not been a friend that has shown up, that has been there, that once they wrap up filming, she kind of disappears and comes back on the scene right when it's time to film again. When these ladies take their friendship seriously and actually hang out post, uh, post taping and post reunion, that they invest in each other and consider themselves real friends. Some may be closer than others, but nonetheless, they felt it was very fake of Quad to only show up and be on the scene or even act like she cared for a camera to be rolling. I can't even say I'm mad at that, guys. Of course, Quad has her, her position as well, that it went both ways and that some of the things that they've done, particularly even bringing Sweet Tea back and Dr. G, or bringing, excuse me, Dr. G back with Sweet Tea to the franchise, to their show, was very hurtful to her. But, you know, there's always two sides to every story, both of which is their own truth. So, hey, I'm here for it. Um, we'll see how that plays out. So, basically, they ask, what well, what were they all going to do when they get back? Dr. Jackie, of course, is still gearing up for her meet with Vice President Kamala Harris, which is really cool to discuss with her some initiatives to um, look into some help with the fact that women of color die at a higher rate than other women in childbirth. Um, there are some issues there. She's raising awareness to that. I think that's great. Um, like I said, she had her moment with some 
comments being exposed between her and Dr. Jackie about how she spoke about black women complaining about health issues and seemingly like the fact that she stated that they complained, cried wolf, if you will, or we cried wolf, if we will. And then when there is a real issue, doctors don't take it seriously, which was very, very, very um, wrong of her to say. It was very, um, very proving the point of what she's, the very thing that she's advocating against, which is, you know, doctors not treating black women um, or, or, or meeting their needs or, or, or paying attention to their physical um, uh, issues that causes, you know, um, more, be or more, more ability, um, excuse me, <laughs> I can't talk today. <laughs> that causes death in childbirth or, you know, issues during childbirth or issues with the children while um, in utero. So it appeared that she was contributing to the very problem that she is fighting against. And so again, though, like I stated, Dr. Jackie has apologized. She's admitted that her words were hurtful and they were in her mind um, taken out of context. Nonetheless, she owns it. She apologized for it. She's aware. And she, this is why she fights then as an advocate to stop um, those horrible statistics. And so we um, then, doc, our Dr. Heavenly is getting ready to go back so she can see her daughter off. Allura has grown up right before our eyes and will be attending, or currently, I guess we should say now, since the show's actually wrapped up, she's attending FAMU, Florida A&M University, which is an HBCU. I, too, went to an HBCU, the best ever to do it, North Carolina A&T, Aggie Pride. But shout out to FAMU also. I love all HBCUs. I think that's great. And that is also where Dr. Heavenly went. So there you go. So the ladies go back to Atlanta. Um, you see a cute little scene where Toya has a meeting. Dr. Eugene comes in and she's trying to get her tracks out and he helps her get her tracks out. Biggest take from that is they have talked about um, their marriage took some hits you know, during COVID. And then post-COVID, Dr. Eugene, like all of the doctors and everyone in the medical field, were working just tireless hours, which of course caused there not to be any time to, you know, time for each other, time for the boys, and it caused some strain in their marriage. So it seems like on this particular season, and now in this moment, they're a lot more intentional of spending quality time, and he made it a uh, cute little remark that him taking her tracks out was indeed a date night. Him spending some, I mean, you don't get more intimate than some intimate than someone actually removing your tracks out of your head. I thought it was sweet. Very cute, cute scene. Um, biggest takeaway from that is that they are really working at their marriage. I think Toy and you, Dr. Eugene are a very cute couple. I really do. Um, Toy sometimes gets on my nerves with her keeping up with the Joneses mentality, uh, working the poor man to death, spending every dime he can scrape. But if he likes it, I love it. They seem to be very much um, committed to each other. I respect that. I do like them on the show. You see also Dr. Simone come in and check in on her grown son's child, son, Michael, that was playing video games. She's in the process of buying a condo for her boys to rent from them and then yeah, which I think is good. You know, if you can do it, guys, that's the way to go. Listen, I'm not. I've seen in the blogs and different um, chat groups that a lot of people are criticizing Cecil and Dr. Simone for spoiling their boys. But listen, she's a doctor. You know, it's hard out there for young adults. Um, I, I, too, have helped my adult children I don't see a problem if you got it and you can help them get on their feet, get started, do it. Don't be an enabler. But I, um, investing in a condo, that's real estate, honey. That's what we do over here. We own several rental properties. That's the way to go. So shout out to Dr. Simone and Cecil. You buy the condo, you make the boys pay you rent. You get them started, teach them how to be responsible, and then you send them out there in this world to go do great things. We all go at our own pace, right? 
And then you see also Dr. Heavenly and Allura, which I thought was a very cute scene. Allura says to her mother, you know, mom, I'm getting ready to go off to school. And so now you're going to have a lot more time to yourself. I think what would be a great idea if you reach out to your sister and repair that relationship. So you get a chance to see Dr. Heavenly um, talk about, and this is not the first time, but she has kind of an estranged relationship with her sister. Her sister's name is Denise. Apparently their relationship has always been strained. Maybe it, it has been alluded to that the reason for that is their mother who is now since then is deceased and it's supposed to have been their mother's dying wish that the sisters come together and repair their relationship. Seems that the catalyst or the reason that maybe the relationship is strained is because the, the mother had pit them against each other and that is kind of what Allura has stated based off of probably what Dr. Heavenly has revealed and she you see her reveal that they go back into a confessional and you see that so yeah and she she's really pushing the issue that um either they need to seek therapy or at least start trying to have some dialogue so she encourages her mom to call her sister which she does her sister does not answer however she does leave a very nice message opening the door for them to communicate which I thought was great. So then we go over to Sweet Tea. And y'all, this was sad. Um, she takes some of the advice and a referral from Dr. Simone to another specialist um, that dealt with fibroids because she's had an issue with that. Upon seeing this doctor and her, this doctor reviewing her charts, she, she lets Sweet Tea know that she has not only fibroids, but endometriosis. Now, I don't know a whole lot about it, but um, basically, a lot of her pain is coming from that condition, the fact that she has fibroids, and the fact that her endometriosis has caused cysts to be on her ovaries that are filled with blood. <clears throat> it sounds, yeah, it sounds rough. Her main concern is she wants to have a baby, y'all. I mean, look, she said it when she first got on the scene. The way she slid in Dr. G's DM stating that, you know, she'll give him what Quad wouldn't, which was a baby. Looks like her condition can reduce her chances of conceiving by 50%. Sad, guys. Um... She goes into the exam room to be further examinated. Um, and after that's wrapped up, she does reach out to Dr. G. She tells him basically what her prognosis is looking like. Though he was very comforting and very um, encouraging, saying that they were going to think positive, that they were going to try and you know, to be God's will. But that his main concern was her. And, you know, it was really sweet. It was a sweet moment. It was a touching moment. It was a chance for us to get to see Sweet Tea. She's putting herself out there. Her struggle's out there. She's not alone. There's lots of women that have a problem conceiving. So shout out to Sweet Tea for being vulnerable and sharing that with the masses. And that's basically how the episode ends. Child, we could put a pin there. But the drama just began because as we were watching last night, so were the ladies from Mary to Medicine. And they got to the part in the episode where Sweet Tea called Dr. Jackie and Dr. Heavenly Grandmas. Guys, I have the Instagram live. It's about a six minute um, video clip. I'm going to show it. And then I'm going to come back on here. And we're gonna talk about it just for a second. Here we go. Oh, yeah. See that's what grandma did. They take they take naps. Yeah. Now you know she's about to get it in, yo. And that's all right. Bring it on. Promise y'all I ain't normally took a long day. I am I am running around. With the 21 months old, <laughs> I'm definitely in bed usually. <laughs> 
guys okay see and that's what i'm talking about now the show itself from the recap you saw nothing earth shattering or overly exciting the live has got everybody talking child now let me say this okay sure it's entertaining and all that now sweet tea when you said that's where her mama was when she told you to go to hell. That was wrong because her mother is deceased. God, they're heavenly. When you talked about the fact that you had three children and that you could do what she couldn't do or you she wished she could do what you do or wants to be because of the fact that you conceived three children and she's having a hard time conceiving and you know that she wants a baby, that's wrong. See, I've seen people that have chimed in on the live saying, ooh, you know, that's what Dr. Heavenly gets. Sweet tea ate with no crumbs left. Mm -mm. Dr. Heavenly goes low and she does. Then she throws out there um, when she, uh, Sweet Tea is talking about her age, that Dr. G is the same age and she's married to her grandfather and all this, that, and the other. Child, it was a hot, hot mess. But look, my thing is this, ladies. Sweet tea, you're going to have to hold your own. Dr. Heavenly, that's just what she does. However, yeah, I don't know, guys. It just, it didn't give um, groan on either side. It's good that Sweet Tea stood up for herself, Dr. Heavenly. I don't know where you're going with that, child. You was ready for bed. You should just went on bed, went on, got your good, good rest. So you can get on up and just get people's teeth all the way together. But at any rate, y'all. That was the drama. I mean, we'll keep tuning in. You know, I, I, I don't have a lot to say other than it went very left. That caused it to go viral. More people want to tune in and, you know, it is what it is. I just encourage, you know, us as women, women that are of color, that are professional, let's keep it cute. That went way left for no reason. Dr. Heavenly, you yourself call this woman little girl all the time. There is a significant age difference. She's 32. Heavenly's in her 50s. Ugh. Okay. So if she makes a joke at your age as well, oh well. Both of them was wrong, child. Dr. Alicia had to get her little two sentences in there too. That was cute. <laughs> Let's keep tuning in. Now, I know that um, I said that I was going to do 90 day single life on today, on Monday. However, we are going to wait and we're going to do that on the same night that we recap Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, which will be on Wednesday. So come back in and come with us Wednesday so you can hear about 90 day single life and married at first sight. My co-host Bria will be with me and we will be talking about both shows. So come on back. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you guys for your support. Thank you every subscriber. Thank you for every like, every share. Please, if there's something that you want us to talk about, recap, start watching, put it in the comments. You know, we're here for that. You know, we want to hear from you. So thank you guys so much. Please continue to come back. Like, subscribe, and share. Until Wednesday, I'll see you there.